you hear from, Mommy? Well, I... I have to talk to Uncle Ben. Now, you wait right over here with Sissy, and don't move. You understand? Right here. I didn't know we had an Uncle Ben. Why did he tell me? Sissy? Faces up. Mommy, please don't spit on me. You can spit on me, Mommy. <laughs> All right. Let's go in now and be very quiet. You're late for supper, Lucretia. I'm sorry, Mother Rogers. Even if you're not hungry, the children should be fed on time. Sissy, Toby, go kiss your grandmother. Mother Rogers, clean hands for supper. I finally heard from Max Wexler. A letter came this afternoon. Oh? Uh -huh. I'd... I'd like you to hear it. Dear Lucretia, I am still shocked by the news of Walter's death. Naturally, I want to do anything I can to help you and the children. If you still feel you would like to settle in Arizona, there'll be a job waiting for you here in the store. Oh, later, Lucretia. Supper's waiting. Good. Dear Lord, we're thankful for all the blessings you've given this house and make us truly grateful for what we're about to receive. I wouldn't give two pins for Max Wexler. I know you don't care about him personally, but he was Walter's best friend. And I think it's wonderful of him to offer me employment. Employment 3,000 miles away? You should think of your children. But I am thinking of them. That's the whole idea. You know how Walter dreamed of moving us all west someday. How he wanted to take the children and raise them someplace with space and air. A new kind of place, different, where things are happening and, and growing and, and we could breathe. I have no difficulty breathing here. Well, I do. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Finish your supper, children. Lucretia. Mother Rogers, please try to understand. We've been over and over this. From the minute Max Wexler began to write us about what it was like out there, how Walter could get a job at the store and, and maybe even get to be a partner. You know it was all we ever thought of and dreamed of. But a man is one thing, a woman is another. You're going off to a place that's uncivilized, a territory. Arizona isn't even a state yet. But it's going to be. And besides, you're a totally inexperienced young woman who's always been sheltered and protected. I know, I know. And what will you do for money? You certainly can't expect me to help you when I so strongly disapprove. I'm not asking for help. I have a promised job. I'll earn the money myself. Oh, Mother Rogers, I've already agreed that I shouldn't take the children until I have a place to live, a home, and money. And I will have. I'll have it right away. I have enough for my railroad fare now. Don't hate me, but I had to. Your rings should have been sacred to you. They were. I used them to make a dream come true. Walter's dream and mine. When will you be leaving? Tomorrow. Have you told the children? No. I will tonight. You don't have to worry about them. What be before you send for us? Not long, son. I promise. I have to know. Because you know what Sissy said today? She says she doesn't remember how Papa looked. Sissy. Well, I don't. I remember he was nice. She put salt on my head and was going to eat me. If Sissy's forgotten what he looked like, suppose you forget what we look like. Toby, love. Mother, don't grab me when I'm naked. Well, don't even say such a 
such terrible things. How could I ever forget you? Yes, how could she forget? She's our mother. <laughs> of course. You're a big palooka, and I'm gonna fix you. <laughs> exciting trip I've had so far. Just think, tomorrow, after traveling only four days, I'll be in Charlieville, Arizona. Lovely, beautiful Charlieville. <laughs> Shag before you shoot yourself. I'm gonna bet the rest. Call. Three sevens. Sorry. Straight. Someday I'll close this place down. Oh, that seems a little ungrateful, Sheriff, considering my weekly contribution to your Christmas fund. You've never given me a dime you didn't win back. Well, that way we can both think of ourselves as honest men. Uh, maybe I'll have better luck with the gals. Come on, Shag, let's go. <laughs> See you later. Take care of the chips, will you? Don't you think you ought to be a little more careful the way you talk to the sheriff? Why should I? Well, in case you've forgotten, gambling is illegal. One of these days, he might close you down. Rena, the bond between the sheriff and me is the strongest that can exist between two human beings. Oh, well, what's that? Money, my love. belongs to me. Pot, how dare you? Are you crazy? The lady doesn't seem to like the idea. I should say not, but you let me oh. go. Why, well, you, you wouldn't want to hit a woman now, would you, Sheriff? In self-defense, why not? Uh, heck with her, you can have her. Sheriff is he, anyway? Well, he's what you might call a relic of the Old West. Gives color to the place. Now, if you'll let me help you with your... Just a minute! Oh, I've had enough color for one day! Excuse me. Aren't you one of the little rascals? Certainly not. My abject apologies. You broke my umbrella. I'm sorry. I guess I should have ducked. Perhaps I can make it up to you. Could I be of service? Well, uh, maybe you could tell me where to find Mr. Max Wexler. He was going to meet me here, but... Is he a friend of yours? Yes, a very dear friend. Although we've never met. I'm afraid Mr. Wexler's just leaving town. Forever. Oh, no. He was killed in a holdup the night before last. Holdup? Some men came into a store just as he was closing. He put up a fight and they shot him. Oh, oh, oh. This is a terrible blow to me. Tough on Max, too. Oh, of course, I only meant that... He was going to give me a job in the store. Well, I'm afraid that's out. The store's been closed by order of the court. 
But if you're looking for work, maybe I could use you. Could you? What did you say your name was? Miss, uh... Oh, Rogers. Mrs. Rogers. Mrs.? Yes. On um, second thought, I guess I couldn't. But if there's anything I can do for you, please let me know. You'll find me at the Lucky Devil Saloon. Good day, ma'am. Thank you. What? What? That job is still open. Oh, it's open all right. She's been trying to find a hand for a couple of months. But whether she'll hire you or not, that's a different matter. That's her job. Whoa. Mrs. Gates? Yep. Have you ever considered hiring anything but a man ranch hand? Nope. What other kind is there? A woman ranch hand. A woman? I wouldn't have one on the place. But I'm a hard worker. <laughs> Gotta admit, you're a woman. You, Mrs. Gates, are not a horse. Never thought of it that way. Well, sometimes I wonder. Have you ever been on a ranch? No, but I... I... Have you ever seen a ranch? From the train window, but I've read a lot of... You read I... how a hand works from sunup to sundown? Killing kind of a job. I'm terribly, terribly strong. I have to have a job, Mrs. Gates, right away. I have to. Let's see you load them sacks of grain in the wagon. Hey, Charlie, you better order me a couple of more sacks of chicken feed. I'll pick it up next week. <laughs> reckon you'll be getting drunk Saturday nights and setting fire to the barn. I'll try it for a month. Oh, thank you. Ranch hand usually bunks in the barn, but 
Seeing as how you don't talk too much, you can stay in here with me. The cot up there in the loft. Thank you. Mrs. Gates. Yeah? I was wondering. I've been on a train four days, and it was a little dusty coming in from town. Could I have a bath? On Thursday? Missed. Who? Old Lem. Been at that chicken house again. Old Lem? Coyote. Been prowling around here for months. Got away with her ma. Oh, no. Poor little things. I have to keep in here for a while. May I take care of them? <laughs> sure, go ahead. I was on her way into town, wondered if we could pick up anything for you. No, I was in town myself yesterday. Got everything I needed. Uh-huh. Maybe a little bit more. Who's that? It's my new ranch hand. Uh, <clears throat> no offense, Aggie, but they, there's something about that shape that just don't seem right. Huh. Where's his hair mighty long? What is he, a Mormon or something? Ain't a Mormon and ain't a he. I got me a lady ranch hand. Oh, well, that clears that up. Pretty little thing. Come all the way from New York. What's she gallivanting out here for? She ain't gallivanting. She's a widow lady. She plans to settle here. Looks kind of spindly. Why don't you two stop off and say hello to her? <laughs> well, now, that seems like the neighborly thing to do. Now, Pat, we gotta be getting to town. And that young woman's got her chores. It won't take but a minute. Now, you know this is Doc Seltzer's afternoon to go over to Bisbee. And I don't aim to miss it. My rheumatism's acting up. All right, Ma. Have to make it another time, Aggie. Come on. Come on. Better make it soon. I don't know how long she's gonna be here. I will. Fill it up.
little coal oil. Thank Mrs. Field. Thanks, Aggie. I appreciate it. Well, we better get started. Oh, Aggie, you haven't told me yet. Told you what? Well, you said when you took me on, you'd try me for a month, and, well, the month is up, and you haven't said anything one way or the other. Would I be taking you into town to open a bank account if I was thinking of turning you out? <sighs> oh, thanks, Aggie. I can't tell you what this means to me. It's been just awful not knowing when I was going to see the children again and not being able to tell them when we were going to be together. Mm -hmm. Well, you still got a long way to go. I know it, but at least now I can make some plans. Oh, they're going to be so happy here with that sky and the mountains. And Toby loves horses. I'm going to teach him how to ride. Sissy's going to go out of her mind when she sees all those chickens and cows and... They're... Oh, they're going to be so helpful. You wait and see. They're little, but you'll hold see them. Hold it, Lou. Hold it. Don't get carried away. I know I said I'd love to have them out here, but it ain't that easy. I can pay your wages next month and maybe the month after, but this ranch ain't something you can count on. If the price of beef drops, if we hit a dry spell, if we get flooded, I... there's been times when this place could barely keep me alive, let alone you and the children. Oh, I'm not afraid, Aggie. We'll make out. I'm trying to tell you it wouldn't be fair to them. But I just can't leave him in New York indefinitely. And I can't go back. I just can't. Um, did you ever think of looking for a husband? A husband? You know, one of them tall critters supposed to take care of us women? No, Aggie, I haven't. I... Somehow I still feel that Walter's my husband. Walter's just a picture in a frame, Lou. Aggie, I knew Walter all my life. Well, I married him when I was 17. I just can't seem to think of anyone else. Back home, maybe it was too soon, and out here, I guess you've just been too tired. I wouldn't even know how to go about it. You think it over. <laughs> That little black and white cab has gotten in the corral again. Bound to be trouble. I'll put him back in the barn. Nice to know you, Mr. Collins. Nice to know you, Ms. Rogers. 
Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, how clumsy of me. Oh, oh, oh. that's all right. Little mud never hurt nobody. Oh, thank you. Uh, uh, Go on up to the house and get cleaned up. Uh, yeah. Excuse me. Oh, my. Oh, oh. What do you think of her? I'm having a hard time getting a look at her. Well, if you take my advice, you won't run off until you do. Where have you been keeping yourself? I figured you'd have dropped by long before this. Well, I meant to. I meant to. Well, why didn't you? Well, first one thing, then another. Saturday before last, the statehood committee called me to go up to Tucson for a big meeting. Then it seemed like every time I started out, why, Ma had come down with some kind of misery or other. Feeling all right today? No, no, she ain't. Just uh, saddled up and fixing to leave while she got a pain right in the small of her back. Sciatica, she calls it. Between statehood and motherhood, you don't have much chance for yourself, do you? That's pretty. Mighty pretty. You can get a good look at her now. Well, now, I wish you would look at that. Well, Aggie, all I can say is you surely do have fine taste in ranch hand. Thank you, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we better get started. Yes, I guess we had. Oh! 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 What is it? Pain. It just hit me. Well, where about? Right in the small of my back. Sciatica. This is the day for it, ain't it? Anything I can do, Aggie? No, no, I, I'm all right, just so I keep off my feet. Uh, Pat, would would you mind driving Lou into town? Oh, I'd be happy to. Oh, no, no, I don't want to put no, you no, in. No, he's no, he's very no obliging, and I want you to do your errands, and here, here's the list of things you can get for me. Well, are you sure you're going to be all right? Certainly, go ahead. I understand you plan on settling in these parts. Yes, I do. Well, it's fine country. Yes, it is. I guess you heard we're going to be a state any day now. Mm-hmm. Not many people realize the importance of statehood. No, I suppose they don't. You take women now. They're going to get the vote. That'll be nice. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Collins. Uh, Pat. Pat. Pat, do you like children? I beg your pardon? I said, do you like children? Uh, yeah. I like them fine. Never been around them much. I was an only child. Oh? I always had a dog, though. A dog? Yeah. Got a fine dog. Real killer. You or any other strangers to come within a hundred yards of my place, and I wasn't there, he'd tear you to pieces. I think a lot of him. Oh. oh! Thank you, Pat. Oh, you're more than welcome. I won't be long. You take your time. I'll be waiting for you in front of the feed store. All right. I'll see you then, Joe. All right. Hi, Pat. All righty, Dan. How you doing? Fine, fine. Sell? Good, good. Yeah. Just wondering why you never come into the saloon anymore. Oh, well, I'll tell you. Seeing as how I'm on the statehood committee and we're against gambling and such as that, why? I don't think he'd look right, do you? I guess not. I'm glad to hear it's nothing personal. Oh, no, no, it's nothing personal. But if you're worried about being seen in my saloon, what do you think the fellows on the committee will say when they see you running around town with a married woman? Ms. Rogers? Oh, she's not married. She's a widow woman. Oh, it makes a difference. It sure does. I hope to tell you. Yeah. Did you say something about the committee being in town? 
Yeah, I uh, saw a few of the fellas go up to the uh, newspaper office. You did? Wonder what they're doing up there. I don't know, but it seemed important. Huh. Funny nobody said a word to me about it. Maybe I better go up there and see. Sheriff, may I speak to you for a moment? Oh, it's you. What do you want? Have you found out anything about the men who killed Mr. Wexler? Only the one of them had a dagger tattooed in the back of his hand. Why? What business is it of yours? He happened to be a friend of my husband. Oh. Well, we're investigating. Is that all you've been able to find out? I told you we're investigating. Well, it's been over a month, and surely by this time... Are you time, complaining you might... about the way I run my office? I'm asking you a civil question, and I'd like to remind you, sir, that you are a public servant. A what? A public servant. <laughs> Do you hear that? The lady says, I am a servant. Do you hear that, folks? That's pretty funny. Yes, sir, lady, that's so funny that you're going to have everybody around here in stitches. <laughs> What's the matter, Rodriguez? Don't you think it's funny? Well? Si, senor. You think it's funny, don't you, Maria? Si, senor. Well, let's see you laugh. Both of you. Come on, laugh. <laughs> Louder. <laughs> Louder! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Oh, you ought to be horsewhipped. And if I were a man, I'd... If I you were a man, I'd have busted you in half by now. Now, you keep bothering me, and I might just forget myself. Save your bullying for someone else. You don't frighten me. Well, what happened was because of me. I'm so sorry. Oh, no, la senora was not at fault. You were willing to make trouble for yourself because of us. Well, good day. Adios. Goodbye, ladies. Goodbye, my dear. There you are, Mrs. Rogers. And thank you very much for your account. Thank you. And I hope we'll see you again soon. Oh, you will. The first of the month. Good, Good day. Morning. Good day. Good morning, Mrs. Rogers. Oh, Mr. Jones, I believe. Your umbrella. Well, uh, there's a mistake. I don't have an umbrella. Yes, you have. Direct from Paris, guaranteed unbreakable. I'm afraid I couldn't accept. Mrs. Rogers, I owe you an umbrella. If I don't pay my debts, what'll happen to my reputation? I'll try it once. Just to get the feel of it. It does belong to you. Thank you. Now, can I buy you a drink? Are you inviting me into your saloon? Certainly not. I was just on my way to the ice cream parlor. Really? I love ice cream. Well, I'm sorry, but someone's waiting for me. Mr. Collins? Yes. He went off to the newspaper office. The newspaper office? Political matter. On second thought, I will join you for some ice cream. Thank you. Sign the recall petitions. Send your telegram to the president. Excuse me. Uh, do you have a petition to recall the sheriff? The sheriff? Mm-hmm. Why, no, ma'am. We have a recall for the tax assessor and others, but not for the sheriff. Will you draw one up, please? Well? Yes, ma'am. I think I ought to warn you, Mrs. Rogers. The uh, sheriff may not like this. Splendid. Thank you. Good day. Sign the recall petitions.
There you are. Good morning, Dan. Welcome to the palace. Hi, Nick. First time I've seen you here, I believe. <laughs> well, uh, uh... What would you folks like to have? Uh, Mrs. Rogers? Oh, well, I'll have a dish of vanilla ice cream with chocolate sprinkles, please. The same. Pass on the sprinkles. Coming right up. What can I do for you, Rena? Oh, I just thought we might get a dish of ice cream together. Ice cream? Mm-hmm. I didn't... I didn't know you were that fond of ice cream. Oh, I've always had a sweet tooth, Pat. Well, I'd, I'd like to oblige you, but there's a young lady waiting for me. Oh, if you mean the young lady you brought into town, because she's waiting in the ice cream parlor. Uh, with Dan. With Dan? Seems he has a sweet tooth, too. Mm. That was delicious. Thank you very much, Mr. Jones. You're quite welcome. You must have an awful good reason for getting calluses on these pretty hands. I have. Two very good ones. That's a shame calluses don't pay better. <laughs> yes, it is. Now, my kind of money is easy money. It's gambling money. It doesn't hurt a man's hands at all. It doesn't mean much to him, either. But it could mean a lot to you if you're willing to let me help you. Thank you very kindly, Mr. Jones. Now we've come to the end of our conversation. Oh, Pat, I'm so glad you're here. Do you know Dan Jones? I'm getting to know him better every minute. This is Rena Mitchell, friend of Dan's. Oh. Lou Rogers. I'm pleased to meet you, Miss Mitchell. Thank you. This place seems to be catching on. Won't you folks join us? Don't mind if I do. We all seem to have a sweet too. I was on my way to meet you at the feed store, Pat, but you weren't there. Oh, I know. I, I was detoured by a certain gentleman. Well, what do you folks have? You figuring on getting rid of me, Dan? I don't know what you're talking about. Petition. You were there when the lady signed it, weren't you? Yes. And you let her? Well, sir, if you can't expect everyone to like you as much as I do, you sign this, Lou? I certainly did. And I'm going to urge everybody in town to do the same. You do, and you might just wish you hadn't. Now, just a minute, Sheriff. I don't like you threatening the lady. I ain't too crazy about it myself. Then you tell her to stay out of my way and to keep her mouth shut. How dare you? You can't talk to the lady like that. I'll talk to her any way I want to. And as for this petition, this is what I think of it. Oh, God! Lady, I know, lady, I got a good mind to slap your teeth in. You do, and you'll have to deal with me. Me too. Well, that's just fine. <laughs> you pull that out of push.
Thank you, Lord. You mad at him, too? Ain't mad at nobody. Pass the biscuits. Something sure smells awful good. I'm baking a cake. I figured I ought to take something over to the Collins place with Mrs. Collins ailing and Pat's got his arm in a sling. I guess I should have thought of that. Yes, I think you might, seeing what a good account he gave of himself at your little hoedown. Peggy, it was not my little hoedown, and I said I was sorry. Just goes to prove he's a real man, even if he is shy. Runs a nice string of cattle, make a good husband and a fine father. Not like some that set their children on a bar and teach them to cheat at cards before they know their alphabet. I know that. Well, I'm glad of that. Well, if I'm going to get that cake over to the Collins, I... Better get on with my chores. Got that mare to shoot this morning. Got to see the cattleman this afternoon. Got to fix that east fence. <laughs> sure wouldn't want to wait until tomorrow and take over a day old cake. Well, I'll take it over for you if you like. Would you? Oh, that'd be a big help. You can leave right after you feed the stock. Never mind cleaning the stable. I don't want you to go over to the Collins and smelling like a horse. Aggie, I want you to know that I think Pat is very nice. I really do. And as for Dan Jones, I have no intention of seeing him again. Uh-huh. That looks right. One of the nicest. All right, I'll take it. Do you think you'll need any more, Dan? <laughs> I hope not. So long, Matt. Morning, Kurt. You see what your little friend started? If you'd have stayed out of the ice cream parlor, the whole thing would have blown over. Well, I ain't waiting for it to blow over. Sheriff, sure. I wouldn't interfere if I were you. That's a bad habit you picked up, Dan, getting in my way. I don't like to see you making enemies. I can handle them. It's my friends I'm worried about. Look, nobody's going to sign that petition except a few old ladies. If you're smart, you'll ignore the whole thing. I sure like the way you ain't worried. Except for your bad manners, there's nothing to worry about. Come on up to the office. I want to talk to you. All right, sure. Let's go. Dan! Dan! Hello, Ed. Been waiting for you. I told you I'd be here. Everything all set? Yeah, like you said. Anybody see you? Not so. Yeah. You can find it. You can find it right there. Got all the rocks marked. Good work, Ed. Thank you. Listen. You tell Tom to saddle up my horse. Then come on in and have a drink. I sure will. <laughs> away from town, aren't you, Mr. Jones? That's right. I don't often have a reason to come out this way. But I thought I'd stop by and pay my respects. Well, that's very nice. But Aggie's gone, and I'm just leaving. Oh, that's too bad. Well, if I can't pay my respects, at least let me pay my debts. Mr. Jones, haven't we been through this once before? Yes, and I must say I found it rather pleasant. I was hoping you did, too. Won't you accept it? No, thank you. I've heard a little more about your reputation, and I'm quite sure owing me an umbrella isn't going to hurt it one bit. Mrs. Rogers, I'm trying to improve it. Please. Well, now, don't tell me you rode all the way out here just to improve your reputation. To be honest, no. Actually, I was... Can you keep a secret? What kind of a secret? I'm on my way up to Broken River. I heard a rumor there's gold up there. Gold? I don't put too much stock in it, but then, of course, you never know. The old prospector who told me about it swore he took out $500 worth in one hour. $500? Mm-hmm. That's the story. I just thought it might be worth checking into. Well, I'll have to be pushing on. I got a long way to go. 
Good day, ma'am. Uh, uh, Mr. Jones? Where did you say it was? At Broken River apiece. Thank you. Mrs. Rogers, I certainly didn't expect to see you here. I know it's your rumor. I mean, you heard it first, but could I go prospecting with you? Well, since you went to the trouble to dress for the occasion, how could I say no? Well, thank you. And who knows? You might bring me luck. I hope so. <laughs> my map, it's the exact spot. Good. Now, well, what do I do first? Well, you scoop some sand and water in your pan and you slosh it around. Gold is heavier and it'll settle to the bottom. Is that all there is to it? That's all. Just keep looking for little streaks of gold. Well, if you don't mind, I'm going to get started. Well, don't you think we ought to relax first? Maybe have a little bite to eat? Eat? Oh, no, thank you. I couldn't think of eating now. Mrs. Rogers, we've been traveling for hours. Well, if you're hungry, you go right ahead. I'll join you later. Strikes me as a likely spot. Mr. Jones! I think I found something! Look at this! Well, what do you know? A real, honest-to-goodness nugget. It is. It really is? You mean I found gold? Sure enough. Uh, well, I didn't know they found it like this underneath the rocks. Well, it uh, seeps under there with the water and oh. sort of collects in little round well, balls. Oh, I can't believe it. Oh, and there must be more out there, loads more. I wouldn't be a bit surprised. Oh, aren't you going to look for some, too? I'll get to it. Don't you worry. Excellent. Try that bar rock. Size. Huh? Well, I'd say you've got at least two hundred dollars worth there. Two hundred dollars? Oh, Mr. Jones, how can I ever thank you? Oh. I'll think of something. Oh. Now, why don't we celebrate your good fortune? Oh, 
Well, I can't stop now. Uh, well, there must be tons of gold out there. Mrs. Roger, I think you probably got all the gold there is in this river. Well, look at all those rocks. There may be gold under all of them. I've seen it happen before. You get a little handful of nuggets, and that's the end of it. Oh, no. Mrs. Rogers? Mrs. Rogers? Dan Jones came by. Says there's a rumor of gold up Broken River. I'm going with him to try my luck. Forgive me for not delivering the cake. Better. Oh, my arm's fine. Hand's still a little sore, though. That deputy has got the hardest jaw. You know, Aggie, don't anybody make a finer cake than you. Well, thanks, sir, but I got to tell the truth. My hired hand baked this. Lou, how about that, Ma? It's right delicious, ain't it? Ain't bad. Could use a little more vanilla. Just right for me. You be sure and tell me that I'll come over personally and thank her the first taste I get. It's too bad she couldn't come along with you. Yeah, I was hoping she'd get back in time, and then I figured I'd better not wait, but getting kind of worried about her, though. Worried? Well, where'd you go? I'm prospecting for gold. For gold? Around here, whereabouts? Broken River. Broken River? There's no gold up there. Never has been. That's wild country, though. There's mountain lions up there. I hope you didn't let her go by herself. No. With Dan Jones. With Dan Jones? You mean you let her go off on a wild goose chase with Dan Jones? What made you do a fool thing like that? Well, there's nothing I could do to stop her. He come by while I was away, and I guess he smooth-talked her into it. Poor girl needing money so bad to bring her children out here. But you... You mean she's a mother? Well, yeah, she's got two of them. Well, I'll be dog. And that... that... Well, if that ain't the meanest, dirtiest, low-downest, no-good trick... Where are you going? You think I'm gonna sit around here and let Dan Jones take advantage of a girl like Lou Rogers? Well, I don't see what you're getting so heated up about. Molly, some things I just don't tell you. Guess I better go, too. Might as well. You done what you come for. What do you mean, Vera? I know you, Aggie. You come here to get my pat riled up over that gal. You've been wanting to throw her at him ever since she got here. I'm surprised at you, Vera. Pat has his poor ailing ma to take care of. Besides, he's too young to get married. I bet that boy ain't a day over 35. Would you like a glass of wine? Close right away. <laughs> Mrs. Rogers, are you coming out? No, I, I, I'm fine right here. <laughs> I can't let you get pneumonia. If you don't come over to this fire, I'll come and get you.
Now, Mrs. Rogers, this is no time to be self-conscious. We must think of ourselves as survivors of a shipwreck cast up on a desert island. Here. This ought to take some of the chill out of you. Thank you. How do you feel? Awful. Oh, my back aches as though a herd of cattle had run over it. Well, let's see what we can do about that. I should have listened to you, but... I, oh! I, I just couldn't seem to stop. Uh, that's cold fever. Gets everybody that way. Uh, Proves you're human, that's all. Oh. Oh. How's that? Oh, it's better. Much better. Oh. 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 Mm. Feel good. Oh. Wonderful. Oh. oh. How far are we from the ranch? 20, 25 miles. I think we should be starting back. We can, not till your clothes dry. Then I think we might as well wait for daybreak. It's a rough trail at night. Aggie will be worried. Worried? She knows you and me. <sighs> Poor kid, you're still freezing. Just a minute. I'm all right. Yeah, how's that? Fine, thank you. Uh, I've stopped shivering. Mr. Jones? Mm -hmm. I said I've stopped shivering. Will you let me go now? Please, I don't want you to kiss me. I'm human, and I am. I never realized before just quite how much. Don't. Why not? Oh, so many reasons. Because I'm what I am, and, and you're what you are. And, and there are other reasons. Two very important ones. More important than us? Yes. My two children. Children. I can't think of anyone, anyone at all, without thinking of them first. It's been such a wonderful day. And I'm so grateful to you for bringing me up here and helping me find the gold. But the day is over now, and let's just say good night. <sighs> Mrs. Rogers. I have rarely in my life done anything that took greater effort. Good night. about to make some fresh coffee. You got here just in time. It don't look like it to me. What are you doing? Are you crazy? Oh. What did you do that for? 
door. Why did you hit him? It ain't high for what he deserves. Well, 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 why? What has he done? What's he done? Luring you up here with stories of gold? There's never been any gold in these parts. Well, you're wrong. There is gold. See for yourself. Look at these nuggets. He salted them. Salted them? What does that mean? Didn't he have a pretty good hunch where to find them, didn't he? Well, yes, he did. Now, Pat, you keep out of this. That was no hunch. He put them nuggets here, put them here for you to find. The whole thing was nothing but a low-down trick. And if you'll excuse me a saying so, it sure looks like it worked. <coughs> Is that true? Did you plant those nuggets? Now, wait a minute. Well, did you or didn't you? Well, yes, I did, but only because I knew you needed the money. Oh, you... You got me all the way up here and let me stand for hours in that icy river with your wine and with your story about how rough the trail is at night? Lou, I was only trying to help you. That is not what you were trying to do. Lou. Keep away from me, both of you. And you can keep your dirty gold. Lou, wait a minute. I sure come charging in with my horns down, didn't I? You sure did. I wish there was some way I could make amends. Well, I don't know about the lady. But as far as I'm concerned, you got no problem. Thank you. You've been trying to write that letter for two hours. What's the matter with you? I can't write it, Aggie. I don't know what to say to the children anymore. Say like you always say. You love them, you miss them, you're figuring every which way to get them out here. When? I can't go on saying soon. They'll stop believing me. They'll start thinking I'll never send for them and that maybe I don't even want them. Oh, now, Lou. Oh, Aggie. There's so little. The children ain't the only thing you got on your mind. You've been brooding ever since that night on Broken River. What happened? Nothing much. He kiss you? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. You kiss him back? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's enough. Oh, I, I'm so ashamed. At night, I lie there thinking about my babies. And all the time, in the back of my mind, he's there. That man. That dreadful, dreadful man. Oh, Aggie. Aggie, what am I going to do? Nothing. I'm going to do. We're going to the bank tomorrow and get a loan and bring them children out here. Hey, I can't let you do that. Don't argue. You need them children to settle you and get your mind off that man. They're coming. Oh, thank you. That's all right. You're so good to me. That ain't it. It's just that I don't want a fallen woman on my hands. Oh, oh thank you. Oh, good word. All right. Now, quiet down. Quiet down, please. I have, I have a telegram here stating, as he promised he would two days ago, President Taft has signed the document making Arizona the 48th state in the Union! <laughs> now, now, now every, everybody up to the celebration. We're going to make this the biggest day in the history of Arizona. <laughs> Hello, Sheriff. How does it look? Good. In a few more minutes, everybody will be up at this end of town. Morning. Howdy, 
County Arena, we're a state, like I always said we'd be. Well, congratulations. Ah, uh, big day in Arizona. Gonna change everything around here. Well, not everything, I hope. Oh, well, now, everything don't need change. <laughs> Why don't you pick up Dan and come on up to the celebration? I'll try. Ma, I've been looking for you. Ain't you gonna come hear my speech? Well, I'm coming. Well, come on. Looks like we made it. There's Lou. I gotta talk to her. You better make your speech before you get your hand busted again. Ma, that was uncalled for. Well, I'll see her later. Come on. Exactly $200. It's for her. Mrs. Rogers. That ought to take care of the children's railroad fare. Thank you, Aggie. Now, let's get over the telegraph office and send it off. All right, just keep quiet now and get over against the wall. Come on. Come on. Sign fell out. The lady got one, the sheriff, right over there. Lou, are you all right? Yes, she's all right. What happened? There was a holdup at the bank. Is there anything I can do to help? I don't need your kind of help. Just leave her alone. I don't know who he is. Lou, you all right? Fine. Fine. I've never seen that fellow before. Anyone get a look at the others? They were all mad. One of them was the man that killed Max Wexler. He was. Wexler? How do you know? How do I know? Because he had a dagger tattooed on the back of his head. Well, what do you know? Well, why don't you go after them instead of standing here asking questions? She's right. Why don't you? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I thought maybe Mrs. Rogers might know something that would help us in tracking him down. The way you tracked them down after Max Wexler was killed? Now, look here, Mrs. Now, Rogers. you're awful upset right yes, now. Yes, I'm upset. I lost $200 in that holdup. Money I was going to use to bring my children out here, but now that's not... If Mrs. Rogers will accept a loan from Charlieville, I'll put up the first $50 to replace what was stolen from him. I'll put up the second. No, thank you, no. They're not coming out here on gambling money. Money you make because you're behind this man. Now, just a minute. Do you think it's any secret he pays you to let him stay open? You better be able to prove that. I don't have to prove it. Everybody knows it, but nobody does anything about it. What kind of a town is this, anyway? A storekeeper killed, a bank holds up. You people, you're celebrating statehood. But you don't have anything to celebrate. Not with gambling in the heart of town and bandits coming and going and... And this man bullying the Mexicans and everyone else. You're all scared to death of him. I was going to bring my children out here. But I don't want them growing up in a place like this, in a town that closes its eyes to what goes on, because it hasn't got the courage to stand up to this one man. Let's go home, Aggie. Well, 
Well, I hate to see you just give up and go back. What else can I do? Why don't you try for a few more months? Something's bound to happen. Enough has happened already, Aggie. I know what you mean. It's going to be awful lonesome here without you. I'll miss you too, Aggie. And the place and everything. What do you do if your mother-in-law don't send the train fare? She'll send it. People enjoy being right. And she was right. This is no place for me. You ain't being fair to yourself. I never saw anybody take hold the way you did. It wasn't your fault that Max Wexler got murdered and the bank got held up. Maybe not. But I came out here hoping to start a new life for myself and my children. To prove that I could stand on my own two feet. And I failed. And that's the end of it. Well, what in the... What is it? I don't know. What in the world are they up to? Ms. Rogers, yesterday, just two hours after you told the sheriff and Charlieville exactly what you thought of them, we had enough signatures to recall Sheriff Burns. Here they are. Now he's going to have to stand for re-election. So we women decided to pick our own candidate. Just look here. Have you all gone crazy? No, Aggie, they haven't. Mrs. Rogers, think of what it would mean to have you, a woman, running for sheriff. The first woman in the country to run for such an office. And it sure would bring out the women to vote. Si, senora. And my people will vote for you, too. I, I don't know what to say. We're all four square behind you. That'll be a big help when the shooting starts. Oh, now, Aggie. Well, Miss Rogers? Mrs. Trask, how much does the job pay? Hold it. Hold everything. Hold on, folks. Wait a minute. I heard about this, but I just couldn't believe it. Lou, you ain't seriously considering this crazy idea, are you? Well, yes, I am, sort of. Now, look, I agree we got to get rid of the sheriff, and I'd run myself if it wasn't for Ma and the ranch, but you're running is just plain ridiculous. Is that so? I repeat, Mrs. Trask, how much does that job pay? Lou, listen. Now, I know the money sounds tempting, and I know why, but before you go off getting yourself killed, I want you to listen to what I hope some more appealing offer. Excuse me. Lou, would... Would you do me the honor of being my wife? Now, that'll take care of things, won't it? The children, everything. Oh, and of course, I, I love you, too. Thank you, Pat. That's very sweet. But... I'm sorry. Mrs. Trask? The job pays 150 a month, and you get a house, rent free. How many bedrooms? Two. Two? Did you hear that, Aggie? I can have a separate bedroom for the children. All right? I'll run. Run for you! I got to admit it's a funny idea. A woman running for sheriff. You won't think it's so funny if she wins. Remember, she's after your scalp as much as she is mine. Yeah, we may have a little trouble. Thanks to the way you've been running this town lately. You haven't seen any trouble yet. And that goes to be a little friend, too. Lou, I know how you feel about me, but I've got to warn you, you're not playing a kid's game. Running against Sheriff Burns is dangerous, and if you're elected, it'll be even more dangerous. I know what I'm doing. 
and I'd appreciate it if you wouldn't march in my parade. Hi, Rena. Vote for me. Sheriff, casting my vote is the first completely private thing I've done in a long time. If you don't mind, I'd like to keep it that way. <laughs> sure. Pretty quiet in town today. Yeah, well, lots of fellas are staying away because they figure it's healthier not to take sides. And uh, certain undesirable elements have been advised to stay home with their enchiladas. So you figure you got yourself elected? From the voters I've seen, I sure say so. Hi, Dan. Thinking of maybe taking over the lucky devil tonight. Oh, yeah? What for? What for? Why, to do some celebrating. <laughs> well, Sheriff, if you celebrate tonight, you'll go down in history as the best loser Charlieville ever had. Take a look. As representative of the Citizens Committee, it is my great privilege and honor to pin this badge on Charlieville's first elected officer, our new sheriff, Lou Rogers. Oh! Uh, uh, maybe you better do this. <laughs> Thank you very much. And now I'm going to fulfill my first campaign promise. The new sheriff's coming down the street. She's headed this way. Well, we'll buy her a drink. Yeah. Want me to go next door and get her a chocolate vault? <laughs> Welcome, Sheriff. Welcome to the Lucky Devil. <laughs> Mr. Jones, you're under arrest. I'm what? I said you're under arrest for operating an illegal gambling establishment. Oh, Lou, that's a little strong. Oh, listen, Lou. You, you, you ought to give him a warning, maybe, maybe close him down. There is nothing in the law about warnings. All right. What's the bail? That'll be decided by the court in Bisbee in two or three days. In the meantime? You go to jail. <laughs> <laughs> and you, Mr. Burns, I want you and your ex-deputy to get out of town. And right now. You aiming to get yourself shot up a bit? Well. Now put your hands up. You too, Shaq. Put them up. Rodriguez, take their guns. Now get out of town. Both of you. And never come back. I'll be back, all right. I ain't finished with you. With any of you. Lou? He means what he says. So do I. Shall we go, Mr. Jones? You know something, Maggie? 
I got a feeling it ain't gonna be safe to spit on the sidewalk. You're right. Lou. Lou, I want to talk to you. Sheriff, I know you're in there. What do you want? Now listen, I know you had to keep your campaign promises. So you closed me down and put me in jail. But you got no right to keep me here. Law says I have. You want to read it? I know the law as well as you do. Better. And bail or no bail, you can release me on my own recognizance. Ah! Now, just a minute. Why are you doing this? What's your real reason? Page 87, inside column. Let's have a look at that. All right. There it is, right there. Oh. You know why you arrested me, and so do I. Because of what happened at Broken River. That had nothing to do with it. You locked me up because I kissed you, because I tried to make love to you. Well, since when is that against the law? Oh. Do you realize you're talking to the sheriff of Charlieville County? I realize more than that. You've got enough courage to be sheriff, but not enough courage to be a woman. Oh. Senora, something is wrong. No, just a little bit tired, that's all. Rodriguez, would you mind staying with the prisoner tonight? If you wish, but I thought I you were... I can't stand being near him. But Senor Jones is not a real criminal. He is, in my opinion. <sighs> Still, he is behind the bars. And you have the keys. I know I have the keys. That's the problem. You take them. Good night. Good night, senor. Hello? This is Sheriff Rogers. Yes, I've been waiting for your call. Oh, that's right. Well, in the interest of a fair trial, I believe Mr. Jones should be moved to Bisbee. Thank you. We'll deliver him first thing in the morning. What? Well, in my opinion, bail should be set high. Very high. Hello? Hello? Lou, don't you go out there. I'm warning you, don't! Take that. Hey, hey, what are we doing? I got it all! Now, ain't you ashamed how you're letting these poor people down, Sheriff? Well, let's go. Y'all set? We got everything we can carry. Good. How about your friend Dan Jones? Let him rot. Well, he's your friend. All right, let's move out. Get on that horse. Oh, my God. Get on that horse or I'll break it off. going to Las Flores on a turkey shoot. You'll get killed. You'll get her killed. We ain't sitting around waiting for outside help. I'm not asking you to wait. 
I want you to let me out so I can help. Maybe it's better if Senor Jones comes with us. Las Flores is the worst border town in the state of Arizona. He's right. Now, Pat, will you open this door and let me out? I'm willing, Dan, but I... Wait a minute. Why is he so anxious to save Miss Rogers? Yeah, why are you so all fired worried about her now? That's a right good question, Dan. Well... They're waiting, Dan. You think you can get yourself to say it? I just don't want to see her get hurt, that's all. Miss Trask, folks, as acting deputy, I'm taking it on my own responsibility to release Mr. Jones. Thanks, Pat. Now, look, we can't go barging into Las Flores without some kind of a plan. Mrs. Rogers, are you coming out here with that grub or do you want another going over? Do what they say, senora, please. There you are. For you and the boys. Do you have any preference concerning us gentlemen here, ma'am? Preference? Certainly. Hanging. Tortillas, enchiladas. Tortillas, enchiladas. Tortillas, enchiladas. Tortillas, enchiladas. Chili, Colorado. Tortillas, enchiladas. Private party inside. The name is Jones, Dan Jones. I think I'll be welcome. All right. Just in case you ain't. Go ahead. Hello, Sheriff. Boys. What are you doing here? Well, I'll tell you. With my place closed down and a jail sentence ahead of me, I figured I might as well join up with you. Sometimes it takes a man a long time to find out what side he's really on. I always knew whose side you were on. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Rogers. Nice to see you again. How'd you get out of jail? Well, Arena's a little more loyal than you are. But I did think you'd offer me a drink. A drink for Mr. Jones. He can get it himself. Did you hear what I said? Three fingers, ma'am, with a little water. Sit down. Let me have that. Thank you. Get back outside. Before we head south, we're gonna play around a stud to see who escorts the gal. Like to take a hand? Uh, no, thanks. I'm a gambler, not a wrangler. <laughs> <laughs> However, as a disinterested party, I'd be glad to deal the cards. Seeing as how you can make them do anything you tell them, I guess you really don't want her. Boy, she's a handful, no doubt about that. But I gotta say, the fellow who wins Mrs. Rogers is gonna find a lot of tiger inside that kitten. And with sharp claws, too. <laughs> <laughs> Give me another drink, honey. Me, too. Pass the bean. Leave some for me. How much more do you want? You had three plates already. Let me have the other one. That's very good, Mrs. Rogers. You might fix a round of the same for the boys. Only you might make it a little stronger. Yeah, a little yeah, strong. Plenty strong. Go on, honey. Shaq, get a deck of cards. Let's get started. Senora, get over here and clean this table. Buenas noches, senor. What do you want? We hear you have little fiesta tonight. Maybe you like we make some musica? You wait out here a minute. I'll see. Comprendo. We wait, see. Now, now, remember, remember, everybody, keep your eye on Dan and don't do nothing till he gives a signal. Let him in. Let's have some fun. All right. All right, send him in. Come on, deal. All right, come on in. Muchas gracias. Senorita? Three, queen, nothing, nothing, deuce, six. All right, men, this will tell the story. Last card, nothing, nothing, pair of queens, nothing, 
Nothing. Possible straight. Pair of deuces. All right, turn him up easy, man. Three ladies takes it. <laughs> Little lady, you drew yourself a real man. Yourself quite a haul. What? Look. Must be a reward on at least half of those fellas. Reward? Oh, Aggie, isn't that wonderful? Oh, Dan. <laughs> Did you have a good ride on the train? Okay. Oh, 
Oh, Mother Rogers. Oh, Lucretia, we're really very proud of you. Oh, thank you. Oh, I'd like you to meet Aggie and Pat, my very dearest. Excuse me. Dan! Where are you going? I'm leaving Charlottesville, Pat. I wouldn't do that if I was you. Law might come after you. The law for what? Desertion. Dad. I feel kind of funny proposing to the sheriff. Hi, Pat. Oh, hi, Rena. Shall we go have a little ice cream? 